So welcome to today's webinar entitled How to Approach a Company and held as part of the Scientix and STEM Alliance Learning Event on Building Teaching Skills in Involving Industry in STEM Education. My name is Marina and I will moderate this session. As you might know, the experts of this mentioned learning event are Arina Nistor and Evita Tasiopoulou. Arina is present here with the Scientix account. She's following the discussions and she's offering technical support. And Evita is also following us with her own account under her name. So feel free to ask any questions to any of the two and to interact with them through the chat. The webinar will be presented to you by Carlos Cunha. He's a Portuguese teacher with years of experience in international education projects and in working with industry and who is leading the Aula do Futuro in Portugal. As I said, his talk will be focused on how to approach companies. In particular, Carlos will give us an insight on how he approached his local industry, what he has proposed to them, and how the relationship has evolved through the years, giving us an inside look in a successful story. At the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes in which you will be able to address questions to our expert through the chat, but you can still post them during the whole webinar as I will be taking notes of them. So that is all. I will leave the floor to Carlos now, and I hope you enjoy. Hello, everybody. Good evening or good afternoon. In Portugal, it's almost night uh, now. Um, Thank you for attending this webinar, and uh, I would like to thank the uh, European School Net to invite me and the uh, Meaning Project to invite me to this webinar. Um, so uh, the idea is to give you some tips, some ideas. Uh, how did I start uh, working with uh, industry companies uh, from uh, local uh, industry companies? at start, but now uh, I work with uh, national and international industries in several projects that I run. Um, so uh, let's speak about it. Um, I started um, around 15 years ago um, with an environmental project. Um, we, at our school, we had uh, a lot of uh, environmental problems and uh, concerns. And um, in Portugal, and in almost every country in Europe, you have the Eco Schools uh, project, Eco Schools flag project. Um, so um, in 2001, uh, we applied to, to the Eco Schools project. And we needed support to, from somewhere to, to, to carry on the activities that we had in mind to improve the environmental behavior of the school. And so I start to contact industries all around my town. It's called Stubal. It's very near uh, Lisbon. And most of the companies didn't reply at all to my letters. So I changed uh, my my approach, and I start requesting meetings with all those companies. And with the face-to-face -face meeting, I find out that most of the companies were very um, interesting, interested in what I had to say. Um, but the most of the companies expressed me the idea that uh, they don't want us, they don't like to that people approach a company and just uh, ask for a general support. Um, they ask for specific projects that they could be able to finance or support in logistical or in science ways, um, but we have to have a, a very clear idea of uh, the purpose that we want uh, their support for. And so I started with the three big companies uh, around Stubal. Uh, Stubal is a, an industry, an, an industrial town. We have these three big companies that we see now. Cessio is a, a, a cement uh, company, one of the biggest produ producers of cement in Portugal. Uh, Lisnav is a shipyard company. They repair ships. They don't build them, they just repair them. And Portocel 
he is a big company that produces paper from wood. So they made the, um, they transform the wood in uh, compound that afterwards is transformed in paper. These three big companies started to support school in uh, two main ways. The first one was support specific projects. I give you an example. Cecil supported us. Uh, we opened a well to water our gardens. The school has almost four hectares of the gardens. And we spend a lot of money on water, company water, to water those gardens. And so we decided to open a well. And Cecil gave us the support we need to pay for the opening of the well. And then with the support of the city hall, uh, we managed to build all the infrastructure necessary to uh, distribute the water uh, in the school. Uh, but uh, as I told you before, I approached Cecil with the project, with the plans to do it, uh, with the, the, the budgets to do it. I asked budgets to three different uh, uh, companies. And so I approached them and I asked them for the support for that project. In the meanwhile, we, we, we start cooperating with Cecil. Uh, with um, uh, activities for our students. So uh, the idea, uh, and that we did with all the three companies that uh, I'm showing you here, uh, to transform a visit in a hands-on uh, activity. With Lijnav, uh, they are a big company that works with iron and with plates. So we build a, a water tank to collect the, the rainwater and use that rainwater to complement the well water to watering the gardens again and so increase the sustainability of the well. And they pay for the transformation of a, a, a old cement tank into a very nice and new uh, water tank. Um, they just they made all the transformation in the, in the iron and painted it and so on. Uh, and Portcell uh, gave us the support to um, to increase the amount of um, plants that we have at school. We have an um, environmental interpretation center inside the school. And so we need to increase the, the variety of plants, Mediterranean plants that we have at school. And so they gave us the, the support to plant those trees and to, to plant those uh, bushes uh, all around school. So I'm giving you three very specific examples that we approached the company. We had meetings to them, we, had, we have shown them uh, what we need, what we pretend to do with uh, their support. And so they, you have to understand that most of these big companies, they have something called the social responsibility. They have to have a budget to the social responsibility. It's a way of paying back the society, the, all the, the problems that they cause to the environmental and so on. And so from that budget, they can support uh, projects that schools present them if they have a clear idea where their money is spent and not that general idea that, okay, I give you 500 euros, but I don't have uh, any idea where you spend it in because you will spend it in paper and ink and so on. So. My advice is always to approach the company, ask them for the support, and then present them. We are contacting you because we want your specific support on this matter. <clears throat> then we approach the companies, as I told you before, to make activities for the students. 
most of the companies receive visits from students from schools, but it is a kind of a touristic tour. They have a, a very uh, well established circuit, and so the students enter the company, they watch out for the big machines and some of the labs and so on. And then it is goodbye. In, in the case of the Portcell, they give the, the students a uh, pencil and uh, some um, A4 sheet, white sheets, and it's, well, it was goodbye. So I approached them in order to transform that in activities for the students. And we co cooperate together with um, well, at the beginning, we do something called the image department, the communication department of the company, and then they create a, a, a system, 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 sustainable department, sustainable department, in order to um, start working with schools. And in our case, we managed to develop some activities in the field of chemistry and physics and biology. I can tell you, for instance, that in, in, the, in the waste tanks of the paper mill, they use a, a, a certain kind of bacteria to treat that waste in order to make a kind of a pre-treatment pre before they send that uh, wastewater to the to the big uh, uh, treatment uh, plant of the city, um, and so students were able to see those bacteria so, and see those live organisms, and why they choose and study that specific species of organism and not another one, because that one was making a very interesting uh, interaction with the waste of the paper mill. In the case of physics, we worked density, we, we worked uh, the resistance of the paper, and so on. In, on the case of the chemistry, we work uh, with the, the chemical reactions that were, are needed in order to, for instance, um, make the paper more white than it is on the, uh, when it is only cellulose. So um, students, when they visit the plant, they spend an, a whole morning in the plant making uh, hands-on activity and making taking contact with these different activities. And so they integrate the, the knowledge of physics, chemistry, and biology in all the paper uh, uh, process, and so we can give them uh, some sense on what are we talking about when we are talking about a paper mill, what is the chemistry, the physics, the biology, and now we are preparing a, a, an activity for maths. They have to, they will uh, make a estimative of, uh, in, um, because when the, the paper is finally produced in the final process, they make these big rolls of paper. And they weigh something around one ton of paper. So uh, with the thickness of the paper and with the diameter of the cylinder, they have to make an estimative of how many meters of paper we have in those rolls. And uh, the, the tests that we make to, to see if we can manage it give us errors of uh, around seven, five, seven percent. So it is a very good estimative, and we can show students that with math, uh, with simple math uh, uh, calculations, we can uh, improve and we can make estimative what uh, we are producing. With the uh, with the Cecil, the, the the activities that we built were on the fields of the chemistry, geology, and environment. In environment, um, one of the, the things with the cement plants is that they are one of the main CO2 producers 
in industry. Um, but the discussion that is made here is that people has to make an option. If they want to, uh, houses built with concrete, with cement, um, they, the cement has to be produced and so the CO2 has to be uh, produced as well because there is no uh, alternative process. The, the process, uh, the, the CO2 is not released uh, the, 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 the main the percentage of CO2 released for the, to the atmosphere is not because of the fuel that they burn to produce it, but on the chemical rea reaction itself. So it is a very interesting uh, discussion because the students uh, are faced with a, a problem, uh, um, a social problem in, uh, in some ways because they have to choose if they, have, they want to build houses with cement or without cement. And they, they are discussing the advantages and the disadvantages of both processes. For instance, how we can make houses uh, with wood uh, or with uh, alternative, uh, alternative uh, materials. Um, and in most cases, uh, those houses are not so resistant to uh, um, atmospheric uh, problems as the cement houses. So it is a discussion. In some countries, um, the option is not that. Uh, the, it's not that. The, 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 the main materials for building houses is not cement. Um, in the case of chemistry, they, they, they study a process. Actually, they see a chemical reaction that we study in chemistry classes, but on that case, they see the chemical reaction applied to a production process. And so it's very interesting because students uh, suddenly realize that they, they are very, uh, they are studying something that, uh, that this company works with it every day. And in the case of geology, uh, because the, the raw materials for producing cement are all, uh, all of them came out from the nature. And in case of Stubal, we have a big mountain. Um, uh, and all the raw materials are, uh, are being taken from that mountain. And the mountain is in a protected uh, natural area. But uh, this protection was after the license for the, the removal of the materials for the cement. So there is a big discussion in my town uh, whether people prefer to have to maintain the jobs and the, this big company working and the production of cement, or if they rather want to uh, close the factory, dismantle it, and just rebuild the natural area and so on. And um, a few years ago, we came out with a commitment. So the factory is responsible for the recovery of the stone yard. Um, and when it will stop the exploration of the stone yard, they will be built a big lake and a big, a big uh, artificial park uh, in order to the, that the population of the city can use it to make picnics and to make uh, lunches and walks at the bicycle and uh, uh, go with small boats and so on to 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 enjoy that that area. It's very near the sea, so they will build a channel in order to have a, a connection between the sea and this big lake. It will be. Uh, a very, very big lake because, as you can imagine, it is a very big stone yard. Um, finally, with uh, uh, you can see here a, an image of the, the plant. It's inside this very green area, and on the back side, this is the sea, and the city is uh, here on the on the right side. 
And at the end of it, uh, on the very far end of the image, you can uh, well imagine a big shipyard that I will speak to you in a few minutes. On the back side of the plant, you have the stone yard. So it is a very big hole made, made on the on the, the mountain. For Lisnav, Lisnav is a, 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 as I told you a shipyard that uh, um, uh, make re repairs on big boats. Uh, we are uh, speaking about about oil tanks, about uh, uh, cargo uh, ships, um, oil uh, towers, and so on. Um, and the activities that we made with them uh, was um, uh, uh, related with physics, with the floating device. The, it was very interesting to, to see the answers of the small kids when we asked them to imagine why the iron of these big boats is able to float. Because in the case of uh, the boats made of wood in the past, the, they all imagined that it was easy to, to, to understand that the wood floats. But in the case of iron, that is very hard to a small children to understand how can we make a big boat of iron float on the sea. So it is a very interesting activity that they made. They have big tanks in a small lab, and so the students have also um, uh, 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 um, activities made with water and with small iron boats and with wood boats and with plasticine and they can uh, mold boats and see that if you have a, a certain amount of plasticine, you can mold it as a ball and it will sink. But if you mold it as a boat, it will float. And the uh, Archimedes law is discussed and so on. Um, with technology, we speak from uh, how to steer a boat uh, until uh, the, to, to the the older students, the students that are preparing themselves in chemistry to go to the university, because most of the of the iron of the boats that is underwater is protected with the electrochemistry um, procedures. So the boat is connected to electric current, and the the degradation of iron uh, is um, uh, prevented with an electrochemistry uh, reaction. So it, it is a complete different um, way of approach the companies. It's not to visit a, a, an exhibition, a, a, but to participate with the company and to uh, understand uh, how can we uh, uh, work uh, side by side with these big industries and to uh, take for our, for our students the best of the of both worlds the school where they learn a lot of uh, theory and laws and so on but here and of course we make some lab experiments and so on but on this case the lab is the factory and so they can really uh, see uh, that uh, the, the small scale uh, experiments and reactions that they made, made on the lab is built here. Uh, and in the case of the cement fa uh, factory, they, they react uh, tons of raw materials and they produce tons of cement every day. So it's very interesting to, 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 to see them and to see how they react to this uh, uh, increase of the scale uh, of the, from the lab to the industry. <clears throat> this is, these are some examples of the visits that we make to the factory. So we have here students, of course, when they visit the companies, they, are, they have to be protected with helmets and uh, with uh, very bright uh, 
shirt, yellow shirt, because in case of any emergency, they have to be very well um, identified as visitors and to be uh, conducted to the meeting points and so on. But um, the idea is to put them inside the factory. Uh, in in here we have the case. I don't see. I don't know. Uh, maybe Adina or Marina can tell me if you see the the pointer of my mouse uh, moving. Um, uh, in this case, we have. Yeah, we can see. <laughs> we can see it, Carlos. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. In this case, we have uh, we see the a visit that we made to the stone yard here. And this is one of the ovens of the cement plant. Um, uh, you can imagine that uh, there is a, a car under here. So this is a car and this is the oven. Uh, so the, the scale is uh, very, very big. Uh, this is the shipyard plant here. Where, and they actually visit the, uh, an oil tanker and saw the contacts of the electrical power to the to the the ship's uh, protection that goes underwater. Um, Ten to twenty years ago, they protected the 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 the, the, the ships with the special hinks, and nowadays they also protect with hinks. But the main protection is an electrochemistry reaction, and this is the the paper mill. So you can see one of the cylinders of paper that I told you about uh, a few minutes ago. This is uh, seven, uh, one, ton of, uh, one ton of paper. And the idea is that they have to calculate uh, with the thickness of the, the, the sheet how, how, how many meters of paper uh, each of these cylinders have. So, all the, 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 the three companies um, managed to, to build with us, with the collaboration with the, uh, with the teachers, uh, managed to build very, very interesting and hands-on activities. Most of these companies were um, inspired by one of the former projects of, the, of European Schoolnet called um, Ingenious. And with the example of uh, the activities developed by Shell and Philips that we uh, uh, know about on the Ingenious project, those companies were inspired and uh, cooperate with my school, building these activities for students and for students from 30, 13 years old to 18 years old. So we have all the years of the national curricula uh, covered um, on these visits. And uh, the, the, the amount of knowledge and of skills developed during these visits are very big. And uh, it is very interesting because this project started um, five, six years ago. And we have a number of students that after these activities were made of the plants, they decided to follow um, engin engineering um, uh, careers. So we have examples of students at our school that are uh, studying for engineering, um, naval engineering and paper engineering and chemistry engineering. Uh, due to the visit that they made to these plants, to, to all the activities that they made with the, with the plants. So, um, if I have to give you a general advice with, uh, with the, 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 the relation with companies, start with small steps. Um, increase the amount of uh, um, mutual confidence that you are making uh, uh, a work, um, uh, very solid work. Companies are not very comfortable with, uh, for instance, changing the teacher of the school every year. Um, it should be always the same teacher that makes the contact with the company 
and that increases the the confidence the confidence of the company on the school work. Um, it is very important in some cases, and in Portugal it is possible to invite the companies to to be members of a um, counseling panel for the school activities. So we have members of these three companies on our panel of counselors, um, and they feel they are involved um, uh, on the the life of the school, um, and so. Uh, from 2001 to 2015, uh, after 15 years of work together and after 15 uh, green flags uh, conquered by the school, um, it, is be, it has been a very profitable um, uh, relation both to the school and to the company because even the company um, grow a lot on this relation with schools. Most of the schools nowadays, they don't go to these companies. There are some schools we, which keep asking only for a visit and not for the hands-on activities. And of course, for them, it's better because they don't have to mobilize um, manpower to um, accompany the, the children on these activities. But they prefer the schools that ask them to, for the hands-on activities um, because uh, they, they are much better for the children and the increase of knowledge and skills developed are uh, bigger. Finally, in the case of the future classroom one, in the, future, in the case of the future classroom, not it is inspired by the future classroom lab of Brussels. Um, it was a project, a project that started in 2003, in, sorry, in 2013, um, uh, due to all my collaboration with European Schoolnet in the international project. Uh, I, um, I, I accompany the development of the future classroom lab in, in Brussels, and I try to bring the idea to Portugal. Uh, of course, the, we could do this without the help of uh, any company. We, can, we could do almost everything that we do here um, with uh, material from the school and some of the budget of the school. <clears throat> but the main idea was not this. The main idea was to build a room, a, a classroom, um, that it was almost a clone of the, the, the future classroom in Brussels, and to have a sample to show the Portuguese teachers and to the Portuguese headmasters how we can do a, a, a teaching and learning space like this and in their own schools. So we start. The, the first contact that we made was to the Minister of Education, and we start working with them. Uh, they, give, they gave us the institutional support for the project, and then we start um, contacting the industries. And the, again, the lessons that we learn with the environment, we apply them here. We show our potential partners uh, that it was a very serious project with very serious objectives and it was not something that uh, in Sunday we had in bang with our head on a wall and voila, this is a big, a big idea. No, it was a project that we thought about it, that we discussed at school about it and that we really wanted to build that school. And so, we start the contact with the industries. Uh, for the first, uh, I would say, 10, 10 uh, big companies, it was very easy. Most of these companies, companies that uh, sell um, uh, techno technological products to schools, and they saw, um, and since the idea was to, um, to build this uh, room to be a sample for all the country, they see here an opportunity to show their products 
to the principals of, our, of other schools. And that was one of our commitments. We built the room for our students, for our teachers, but also to, for our partners. Our partners can, could use the, the room to show their own products, to make uh, teacher training to other teachers all over the country and international teachers if necessary. And so, uh, step by step, we managed to join together all these companies that, um, okay, some of them are covered here, uh, but uh, never mind, it's not pub uh, published uh, uh, um, objective here. The idea is to, to show you the amount of companies, some of them international companies, that joined the project. And I could tell you now that uh, in the case of Portugal, uh, we are already, we already have 16 of these classrooms opening, opening and working in Portugal. And until the end of this school year, we will have around 40 of them working all around the country. And uh, I could tell you uh, with, okay, some proud that 75% uh, of them or so pass to our classroom in Stuba and were inspired by us through the European School Net Future Classroom Lab because we always tell them that this, is, this, this was not our idea. The main idea, the, the beginning of this big idea started in Brussels and all the presentations started with the, our inspiration, the Future Classroom Lab. But again, it is a matter of show them, show the companies that um, our collaboration, our cooperation could be um, very good for both the school and the companies. I could tell you that in, in our case, in, we opened the, the, the room to students in October 2014. And from then to now, uh, more than 1,000 students passed the room, more than 1,500 teachers passed the room, and more than 200 uh, headmasters and uh, school boards passed the room. And we have also um, Erasmus Plus projects um, in the case of job shedding that passed the room um, uh, last month, we have three colleagues from Hungary that spent two all days with us, um, watching our classes, watching the example of the activities that we made at the, this classroom. And also we have visits from teachers from all over Europe that come to Portugal to make teacher training in Erasmus Plus programs and um, the training centers um, always spend a morning with us, show them the, the classroom and uh, show, show them how do we work with this classroom, how uh, we use this very inspiring space with our students. Um, most of these companies um, are very, very interested with the, pro the program and I can tell you that um, be very creative. Uh, it is a, they build uh, 3D printers. Uh, East Green and Home LED. They they make uh, illumination with LED. Um, and uh, this company, Indopart, that made the floor of the the, the, the room, uh, were the last uh, uh, partners that joined the project. <coughs> I'm sorry. And uh, uh, this happened. Um, two weeks ago. So we have an increased number of partners of companies that wanted to join the project because they believe it is a good idea and it is a good way to teach the students and to show them, uh, to develop with them um, completely different skills uh, 
that we cannot develop in regular classrooms. Uh, Marina, um, I think I would uh, accept questions now and uh, I don't know if you want me to develop something more. Yes, we actually have a number of questions already. Well, first of all, thanks, Carlo, for the, for the presentation. Um, before I read the questions that they were already on the chat, I would like to mention that next to the particip any participant's name uh, in the participant list, uh, there's a hand symbol. So you can click on it to ask any questions directly to Carlos, and we will open your audio, and then you will be able to ask them directly. But on the meantime, um, we have selected a number of questions that have been written on the chat. I actually want to start by one of the last ones from Nada, and she actually says that um, she has uh, such an approach, an approach in vocational schools. Uh, she says it is mandatory for students to spend some time in factories, industry, or organization. And her opinion is that the idea is good, but we have to start from primary schools. And I would need to know if you have any comments on this topic. Yes. Um, the problem with the primary schools, it, these are three, uh, these are three um, very, um, I would, how can I say, hard industry factories. So the, the security problems and the security uh, levels are very big for very young kids. So they don't accept visitors under 13 years old. And even for the 13 and 14 years old, we have to um, overcome a lot of problems. So we uh, we prevent, we uh, we avoid the, the visits of the younger kids because they they have to be with these helmets. They have to know the the exit pr procedures in case of fire or explosion. Uh, you can imagine that when they are repairing a oil tanker, that it's very dangerous because they are welding uh, a tank that uh, a few hours before had uh, naphtha or, or oil or gasoline or fuel. So uh, it, is a it is a very dangerous environment. But I can add to you that uh, we also have um, the cooperation with several companies because we also have um, uh, vocational and, uh, and professional courses in our school. And so that is another um, field of cooperation that is not quite my, uh, my job to do, but we have a, a number of teachers at school always contacting companies. We have vocational courses of um, uh, restoration and bar um, and uh, vocational courses of uh, um, ICT, informatics, both of hardware and software. And so our students have to spend, in the case of uh, the professional courses, they have to spend three months in companies at the end of the, of the three-year course. So um, that's another field of cooperation because you put them students, it, it, it's mandatory for them to, to, to end the studies. But uh, I know it is an issue, but in the case of the primary schools, I would recommend to visit um, lesser dangerous companies than these three big ones. And we have examples, but in most cases we, we um, prioritize visits for the primary students to the science centers. As you know, in Portugal, we have a network of science centers all over the country, and the primary students always go to the science centers to make hands-on activities also, but in very um, uh, not so dangerous environments. Marina. Yeah. yeah. Um, thanks. Uh, thank you for the for mentioning this problematic. Actually, Evita on the chat was mentioning another one, which is that guidance is needed in order to connect industry work with uh, real life needs and in a way that it's understandable for for 
for little kids. Um, moving on, though, to another question, so we have time to cover them all. I'm going to go back to one that was mentioned in the beginning by Clara. Um, she was saying that there was a lot of uh, tourism uh, where she lives, and I'd like to ask you if, there's, if you would have any particular tips maybe to approach that kind of in this, uh, in industry. Uh, I didn't uh, understand the, the kind of companies? Tourism. Ah. Hotels, etc. Okay. Uh, well, in our case, we contact them for the vocational co uh, courses of the uh, um, restaurant and bar. Uh, so uh, our contacts are uh, in, that, uh, in that field. But I know that there are some examples on the south of Portugal in Algarve um, that uh, teachers contact big uh, hotels that also have golf fields in order to make activities uh, in the, um, the fields of the, um, what kind of products they use on the hotel, um, what kind of water treatment is necessary, for instance, for the cooling systems of the hotels, uh, what is being done in order to increase the system, I cannot say this word today, of the hotel. Uh, so um, there are a lot of uh, activities that can be made in big hotels if they have um, uh, golf uh, fields uh, and the hotel itself. But I would say, without any experience of that, that if the hotel is near a skiing um, uh, place, um, there are a lot of physics that can be studied on those skiing uh, uh, places. So I would uh, ask them uh, help for that. Okay, uh, thanks for that. Um, I, there was also an, uh, actually another question on another type of industry apart from tourism. Uh, Laura Aurelia was mentioning trade industries, and Adina also already mentioned on the chat that it involves math skills and ICT skills. Um, would you have any program on that, similar to the one you have with the hotels, for instance? Uh, for the ICT skills, uh, when we visit the, um, the cement plant, all the control uh, room is made with a very, very uh, modern and very um, intense ICT uh, technology. So the students are, um, in, are encouraged to, to watch the controls and how can they remotely from uh, the control center, they can actually um, control most of the variables of the process. And in the case of the, the cement plant, one of the activities that we are um, doing and developing, probably to start next school year, 2017-2018, is to make um, a, a, a small robot that will uh, um, be a, 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 an experiment uh, remotely controlled uh, with Arduino, and they can um, just simulate how the control room of the factory controls the pumps and the feeding of the raw materials and the temperature and the fuel with a small uh, uh, computer with an Arduino device and some valves and so on. So it is an integration of that and it is to show the students that with the, um, uh, very simple uh, devices we can use ICT to control all these factories. And mo in most of the cases of the cement plant, they give examples what is the difference of the, the today's plant and the, the, the plant of 30 years ago. When some problem happens somewhere in the factory, there were these men who went to the place to, re to make repairs and to make corrections of the flow of the pump or so on, open valves and closed valves. And nowadays, everything is done with the computer in a very nice uh, computer room with uh, air conditioner. In, in, you can imagine that in Stuba, in the, in the months of July and August, we have 40 degrees of temperature. 
So it's not very pleasing to the to the the man to go to the field and this oven, if you approach if the oven is working, if you approach the the oven uh, by feet, if you approach less than 50 meters, it, it, the temperature is so intense that you will be burned. So it's and with 40 degrees in the atmosphere, it's not pleasant. So it is a way to show that ICT is um, being used intensively on the industry. Uh, th uh, yeah, thank you, Carlos. That was very insightful on ICT skills. I have uh, two more questions um, that were posted on the chat. I will read one directly since it's pretty long. Uh, Osgur, he says, I have one project to control inside greenhouses, gas rates, temperature, organic fertilizer, etc. For example, I ask a physics teacher to create some sensors to check carbon dioxide rates and temperature. He told me that he can create some devices using nanoparticles, and I also asked chemistry teachers how we can increase carbon dioxide rates to increase photosynthesis. She told me that we can fire some gases, it can transfer water and carbon dioxide. Um, and that he says, he mentions that he used this in projects uh, in biology, physics, and chemistry, and that he's a biology, biology teacher. And his question is if it is possible to teach together in class, sciences, and math, uh, subjects and either if you have uh, this kind of curriculum or if the curriculum it involves all the same subjects together I'm assuming the question is regarding Portugal so um, yes okay very interesting project uh, probably you remember Marina I don't know if you visit them in uh, in Iceland uh, when it was this uh, scientists uh, workshop uh, we visited a um, tomato uh, greenhouse that was completely controlled by the cell phone of the owner. Everything from the watering the, tomo the tomatoes, from lightning, CO2, even the, the release of the bees for uh, fertilizing the plants or something, uh, was controlled with the cell phone of the owner. And this is very interesting because in this case, we have all these STEM um, uh, subjects uh, joined together to make a, a, a greenhouse. Um, actually, uh, I'm, I'm working in a project um, using uh, Raspberry Pi to, and the AdSense of Raspberry Pi uh, to control uh, these variables, not in a greenhouse, but actually to make the control of the environment inside the school and inside of the classrooms. Because in the winter, mostly in the winter, with all the windows closed and so on, after three or four hours of classes, the quality of the air inside the classroom is very bad. And so I need a project to install some Raspberry Pi um, systems on those classrooms in order to have the idea of the quality of the air. Um, a few years ago, we have um, a subject called uh, Project Area, where teachers from different uh, areas could work together to support students in the development of a project. That was stopped, uh, I would say, six or seven years ago. And, but now the Portuguese Ministry of Education is speaking about putting all again uh, um, on the curricula project area that is decided um, by the school. It is a, a very interesting uh, question because on the future classroom lab that I showed you before, um, we um, prioritize uh, classes made with different teachers at the same time do, doing uh, curricular uh, uh, articulation. And so we have math teachers with chemistry teachers or history teachers with math teacher, what is uh, an approach that most of the people, uh, most of the teachers couldn't imagine if it was possible. But it's very possible and there are some very interesting classes 
uh, that can be made with the history teacher and the, the, the maths teacher. And, but of course, the natural connections are maths and physics, maths and biology, uh, uh, biology and chemistry, and so on. For the CO2, for the greenhouse, I would recommend something that I use on my lake. When the pH of the lake is very high, because the lake is made of concrete, and I learn after building it that the concrete increases the, the pH of the water, and sometimes I have pH of 8 to 8.5, I put, um, I never know the name of it, the, the thing that we add to the flour of the bread in order to increase the size of the bread, uh, I, don't, I don't remember the name in English, and I, we add this and some sugar and some water, and the, the development of this yeast, yeah, thank you, uh, Osgood, uh, I, I joined together yeast, sugar, and uh, tepid water, uh, water at, uh, I would say, 20 MSU degrees, and they, the, the, the development uh, of the yeast uh, uh, releases CO2 that I blow inside the lake with a big uh, tube uh, with a stone at the end because I want the, the bubble to be at the bottom of the lake. And uh, I can, I managed to decrease the pH in two or three uh, algorithms. So I would decrease it to 6.7, 6.8 in order to uh, decrease the number of diseases on the, the, on the, the skin of the fishes. So it, it, it's a suggestion for the greenhouse. Marina. Marina? Hi. Yes. Hi. Um, sorry, I was muted. Uh, no problem. Th thank you, Carlos. Um, Osgur is already saying that he already has some ideas on your explanation about uh, fermentation. Uh, I don't want to miss one previous uh, question from Gusenen related, now that you mentioned also the Sala de Aula do Futuro. He's actually uh, asking what is the approximate number of students that they should have in a future classroom? Well, that depends a lot on, on the number of teachers that you have together on the classroom. But I would say for a, a, a reasonable number would be up to 20. The best number is 15 maximum. Uh, this is um, in most of the European countries um, uh, uh, the number of alpha class. So I would suggest, uh, and it's um, the, that what we do at our school, um, we always have parallel um, uh, activities with the students. After class is going to the library where they can make a research or a practical work with the libra lab librarian teacher uh, about um, uh, some issue of the curriculum and the other half of the, the classroom goes to the future classroom lab and after one hour they change. That's what, how we manage to, to work at our school and it has been running very well because we have to show the students that books are still one of the best ways of doing research because they don't need power they don't erase themselves, they don't put themselves. So it's a very re reliable uh, source of information. And of course, uh, they have Google and they have Wikipedia, but they have to know the, and they have to take the best of both worlds, both ICT and computers, uh, the, the, the web, and the books of the library. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, that was a very nice ending line, actually, because uh, I think we're going to have to finish the webinar here. Um, just mentioning that uh, during the next week, we will publish the webinar recording in the Twinning Learning event. And well, thanks, Carlo, again for the presentation and, of course, to everyone attending today. And I guess uh, we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you, again. everybody.